Today we are making fermented garlic. This is a very simple recipe that allows you to get creative. You can make it with fresh herbs or dried spices, or you can make it straight up with no frills. Ingredient wise, you will need lots of garlic bulbs and optionally an onion. I have found that once in a while, garlic straight up can be a bit slow getting started in the fermentation process and adding a little onion can help get the fermentation initiated a bit faster. Decide if you want to add some fresh herbs. I'm going to make one jar with rosemary and the other with dill. Tarragon and thyme would also be nice additions. There's no measurement, just as much or as little as you'd like. Next, you'll need some salt. Do not use a salt that has anti-caking agents added because these chemicals can cause a fermentation to fail. Read the ingredient label to know whether or not your salt contains them. The best salt to use is one whose ingredients say salt and only salt. To make the brine for a one pint or 500 milliliter jar, add three fourths tablespoon of fine salt or 15 grams of any grain size salt to one cup of water, 250 milliliters. Stir to mix thoroughly and set aside for later use. Next, prepare the jar and fermenting weight by washing them in hot soapy water. Sterilization is not required, hot soapy water is sufficient. Remove the skins of the garlic cloves. Set aside any imperfect cloves like these. Simply cut off the imperfections and mold is the only exception. If there's even the tiniest speck of dusty or fuzzy mold, discard it. And if in doubt with any clove, just don't use it. Next, take a medium to thick slice of onion and cut it up. If you're using fresh herbs, cut those up as well. Be sure to wash the scissor blades beforehand. One heaping cup like this of peeled garlic is sufficient to fill the pint jar while leaving room for the brine and fermenting weight that will come later. Depending on the size of your garlic cloves, you may use a little less or more. Add the onions to the bottom of the jar. You don't need a lot for the purpose that we're using them for, but if you want to add more with the intentions of eating them with the garlic later, feel free to add more if you wish. Add the herbs and the garlic in layers. Play a little Tetris to fit the cloves into empty spaces. And as you can see, it's just fine if any of your cloves are split open. You can also slice the cloves if you prefer instead of using whole ones. In the end, you want the jar about this full. Pour the brine over the garlic and herbs and fill it up to the jar threads. Add the glass fermenting weight and firmly press down. If you don't have a fermenting weight yet, Watch my video on DIY weight ideas since complete submergence beneath the brine is extremely important for the safety of a fermentation. So don't skip the weight. With a clean utensil, lift out any floaters that may have risen up to the top. Place a loose lid on the jar. And so long as the lid is loose during the fermentation period, you will not need to burp the jar. In the exact same way, I prepared my second jar that includes the fresh dill. A specialty fermenting lid is certainly not required for fermenting. I often use regular lids as you just saw with the first jar, but for a little variety, I'm gonna demonstrate this Sofico fermenting lid that has a valve here that releases the fermentation gases while keeping oxygen from entering. If you're interested in further exploring specialty fermenting lids, watch my video where I compare the most common fermenting lids on the market along with their results. Sometimes there can be a little brine overflow, so I'll place this dish here just in case. Then press the Sofoco lid into the jar. If you want to use your choice of a dried spice, like perhaps some red chili pepper flakes if you love the heat, follow the same method as the fresh herbs by layering the dried spice and garlic into the jar with the onion at the bottom. Add the glass weight and brine. This time I flip flop the order by adding the weight first and then the brine, but either way is fine. If you're doing garlic only, obviously skip the onion and the herbs, but add the weight and brine and lid like the others. Nothing special other than that. To catch any possible brine overflow during the first week of fermentation, place a kitchen towel under the jars. Leave the garlic on the counter for two to three weeks. You can end on day 14 if you wish, or day 15, 18, 20. Feel free to begin taste testing around the two week mark and then end the fermentation when it tastes good to you. There are no rules. 
Now I'm going to take you through the entire fermentation period so you know what's normal since some things that you'll see along the way may leave you wondering. I'll also demonstrate how to end the fermentation and store it long term and watch the whole video through so you don't miss out on valuable tips and information. Within the first couple of days, bubbles will begin forming. These are not air bubbles, but rather carbon dioxide bubbles being produced by the microbes. The bubbles will last around seven to 10 days before they die down going into weeks two and three. This is normal and to be expected. While keeping an eye on the fermentation, remove any floaters that may have been pushed up by the carbon dioxide bubbles. Things floating on the surface aren't protected by the brine and can be an invitation for future mold. These chili flakes are sticking to the glass rim, so I'm going to just wipe them off with a clean paper towel. Colors will also transition from bright and vibrant to muted tones. The brine will become cloudy, and these are normal occurrences. Farther along the way of the fermentation period, some of the garlic and the onion pieces may turn translucent. This is okay. Now check this out. This garlic is turning bluish green. Why? When garlic has prolonged exposure to acids such as vinegar or the acidic brine of a fermentation, an organic compound in garlic called allicin can react with other amino acids causing the garlic to turn greenish blue. Other than the garlic being a color we aren't used to, it is harmless and the garlic is still safe to eat. If you want a deeper dive into the science behind it, watch this other video of mine. I'll leave a link in the description. This is day 16 and I'm going to end the fermentation. Visually inspect it to make sure there's no mold or other weird funk growing. With clean hands, pull out the fermenting weight. Now let's take a pH reading. The pH reads 4.3, so it has slipped into the safety zone, which is a pH below 4.5. If the pH is even lower than four, then that's great. To further understand the importance of a fermentation's pH, watch my video on the five safeguards of fermentation, where I will go into further detail. And also check out my other video on the four point checklist that covers more details on sight, smell, pH, and taste to confirm that you have a fermentation that is safe to eat. I can't recommend those videos strong enough, especially if you're new to fermentation. So be sure to watch them next. You'll find the links in the description. Let's take a taste test. Oh goodness, this, this is delicious. Fermented garlic mellows with age and has a really delightful flavor, especially with the added herbs. And I should say fermented garlic usually mellows, but on the rare occasion, it will go the other direction and become hotter. My experience is about eight out of 10 mellow and the other two amp up. For long-term storage, I'll keep the fermenting weight out and place a tight lid on the jar. Store the garlic in the refrigerator where it will last for many months. How I'll be eating my fermented garlic is by adding it to meals and recipes as a flavor complement. Cooking will destroy the probiotics, so add the fermented garlic to non-heated marinades, sauces, dressings like a homemade salad dressing, or hummus. Hummus is amazing using fermented garlic versus fresh. Double up the fermentation by adding it to my fermented hummus recipe or to a cooked meal after it's been cooked. This is a jar of fermented sliced garlic I made and I added a dry Italian spice blend. It is so delicious. If you're just going for the delicious flavor of fermented garlic and don't mind much about the probiotics, then use it in any recipe and feel free to cook and grill away. I do that as well at times too. It was fun fermenting with you today and if you would like to buy me a cup of tea to say thanks for what I do, I'd be so grateful. Links for everything I've mentioned are in the video description, including the five safeguards of fermentation and the four point checklist. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.